Hello everybody, my name is Abuno Isaac Berry, and today we're going to be doing uh, the lab at Brooklyn College. We're just going to document our results. So here is our little graph. I'm going to split it approximately in the middle, no two scale promises. So this is just the center. You have one meter to the east and one meter to the west. So zero, and I'm going to take west to actually be negative here. So this is gonna be minus one, and this is gonna be plus one meter. So what we're going to do here is, this is our buggy. So it's going to find its way one meter to the west. Then it's going to flip itself over and travel two meters back this way to the east. So the time it takes for this travel is 2.61 seconds. 2.61 seconds averaged out from a lot of experiments. And the time it takes to travel this length five point oh two seconds. Once again, out of lots of experiments. And the total time taken and here's a very important footnote. In 9.36 seconds. Now you might be saying, but the time to go forward is 2.61. The time to go back is 5.02. Doesn't that mean it's 7.63? Where did the extra one and a half seconds go? Well, that's a very good question. And that's because of the flipping time. You see, there's about one and a half seconds where the car is like on the wall here and it had no horizontal velocity, but we still have to count that. So keep that in mind later. So now let's get back to drawing this. So let's first find the distance traveled. Well, obviously it was three meters. The displacement, well, it was, you went minus one meters, but you ended up one meter east of where you originally were. So, we write it as this. And then, for our speed, we write that as, well, let's first take S1 and S2, the separate speeds. So, its speed, while traveling this way, was its distance over its time, so that's one divided by 2.61. Yes, that's correct, because we're using a meter stick with accuracy up to the centimeter, so we put a zero there. So then, since we're using three sig figs here, we get 1.00 over 2.61 equals this long number, but we only take the first three sig figs, so 0.383, and this is in meters per second. And for S2, we take D2 over T2 is 2.00 meters. I should remind you to put units. That's always a good practice. Over 5.02 seconds. And some uncertainty went into this, meaning these two were not necessarily the same, but they're very close as you can see. So once I divide this in, we're only using three sig figs here, so we just write down 0.398 meters per second, which is pretty stunning, a difference of only 0 0.015. But now, that's speed one and speed two. To take in the average speed, you have to take into account the flipping time. So that means you have to use the full 9.36 seconds instead of 7.63. So it's equal to the total distance divided by the total time, which is 3 divided by 9.63. Yes, that's correct. Also 3.00, because it's simply an addition of things that already have two sig figs. Well, not three sig figs. So, 3 divided by 9.63. Yes, I know it's 3.00, but we include only three sig figs here. So even though it's like 0.3115265, we got 0.312 only. So, 
that is our total average speed. Now, let's find V1. That's equal to displacement 1 divided by T1, which is minus 1 meters, or 1 meter west, divided by 2.61 seconds. And as you can guess, that's simply the negative... Oh, yep, yep, I forgot once again. As you can guess, that's simply the negated version of this, so minus 0.383 meters per second. V2, similarly, is going to be displacement 2 divided by time 2. And since the second displacement was 2 meters in the eastern direction, it simply looks about the exact same as V2. So it's 0.398 meters per second. And now we find the total average velocity, which is, once again, you have to take into account the flipping time, but you also have to take into account here that we are, we've traveled 3 meters, but our displacement is only 1 meter, 1 meter east. So we write 1 meter over 9.63, yes, I know. And that's equal to about 0.104 meters per second. Yes, that's right. But that is implied because the magnitude, because it's positive, not negative. So you don't have to say to the east. All right. So now let's create graphs for these. Perf is going to be displacement over time, velocity over time, speed over time, and distance over time. So the distance traveled over time isn't really that bad. We just go until 2.61 here when it travels one source stress. So it really goes something like this. Then it stops for a while. Actually, we can calculate how long it stops for if you really wanted to. So 1.73 and 2.61. So it stops for 1.73 seconds. So this becomes about 4.34. And it's flat during this time. And then it goes up this way. So 2 and 3. And it stops by the time of 9.63. So yeah, hopefully that's a good enough graph. Okay, now the problem is the slope of the first one and the slope of the second one are the same. JD number one was how much? They are not the same. So which one was the bigger? The bigger one was this one, but... Uh, that one is the less speed, so make it more speed. Yes, that is an issue caused by my eyeball. I will be more wary of eyeballing things next time. Hopefully this is a... Wait, no, that's not even a straight line. Hopefully okay. this is a better slope. All right. So now we have ST. So for our speed over time, it's simply constant based on our observations. So we have 0.384 and not much higher, 0.398. So we simply... Draw this for 2.61, it drops to 0, so 4.34, then rises back up a little bit up, you can adjust it. to 3.98. As you can see, I did rise it a little bit up. All right. So now, for displacement, I'm actually going to have to extend this graph a little bit, as well as the velocity graph. So, here we go. Now we have minus one meter and one meter, so kind of like a number line. And then we have 2.61, 4.34, So, we have, it goes down here, uh, then it becomes stagnant for a while and then it rises up pretty quickly back there. 
And finally, for our velocity over time, it's essentially the same as this, but the 0.384 is negated. So, 0.398. And then once again, you have to factor in the downtime. So, 4.34, 9.63. So now here, we write down uh, minus 0.384, whoop de doo It really quickly goes down to zero. Then it really quickly goes back, oh wait, no, not that way. This way, it goes back up again and stays there for the remainder of the time. So now, at home, I want you to prove to me that the area under the curve here approximate these as rectangle, and this would be... 9.63, I want you to prove to me that the area under this curve is the same as the distance traveled, and the area under this curve, once again approximate these as rectangles, is the same as the displacement. So yeah, oh yeah, and here's a homework hint, this should be counted as negative area, so it's a subtract from the total. So yeah, that's it. <laughs>